Today, AMD are launching three new processors in their Ryzen 3000 lineup. The six core 3600 XT that we're going to be taking a look at today, but also the eight core 3800 XT and the 12 core 3900 XT. Now, apart from the really odd naming choice, you can consider these processors a nice small refresh within the current Ryzen 3000 lineup until fourth generation Ryzen CPUs finally arrive later this year. And honestly, no one was really expecting these Ryzen 3000 XT XT processors, they are not within AMD's current roadmap, but it is hard to complain with more performance at the same price point. The big thing here with these XT CPUs is the clock speed bump over regular Ryzen 3000 CPUs, and probably more importantly, the overclocking potential that you can get. It really is a lot more impressive than what we've seen with Ryzen so far. So let's take a look. Now, firstly, I'm not going to waste any time talking about how the naming scheme is a problem. I'll just say that it is a problem, and I wish that AMD would at least try to not confuse consumers with future products. Moving on, here are the three new CPUs launching today. The Ryzen 3600 XT, 3800 XT, and 3900 XT are just like their X counterparts with a higher boost clock profile and higher overclock ceiling. I'm not sure if it's right to say that this is new silicon that we've never seen before because it is still the Zen 2 architecture, but it is more than just a factory overclock. In AMD's words, these processors contain materially better transistors than those found in prior third gen AMD Ryzen processors, and that the overall goal of these improvements was to refine transistor characteristics, resulting in reduced voltage, reduced leakage, and improved operating frequencies. There aren't any IPC or instructions per clock improvements here. Running the Ryzen 5 3600 and 3600 XT at the same clock speed will give you the same performance. The advantage of XT is that the silicon has been refined to have more potential, allowing higher clock speeds at a given voltage. These new XT processors will coexist alongside the rest of the Ryzen 3000 lineup, so it is a pretty big lineup at the moment, and they'll each take on the launch pricing of the X processors before them. So for the 3600 XT that we're looking at today, 249 US puts it around $40 or so more than the standard 3600 at the time of filming, and about $50 less than Intel's i5-10600K. But just what kind of clock speeds can you expect for that extra money over a standard Ryzen 5 3600? Well, it will consume a bit more power. In Blender here, we're looking at an additional 15 watts or so, but we also get almost a 300 megahertz frequency boost. That is seriously substantial and does yield a meaningful improvement in a lot of tasks. It does run a little bit warmer as well though, as you would expect due to that extra power. With a 240 mil liquid cooler on an open test bench, the 3600 XT ran a little over 5C warmer than the standard 3600 in a blender. But let's jump straight into the benchmarks now, starting with our usual production workloads. And of course, we've got to start with Cinebench. So here we have all cores and threads enabled, and we're looking at an 8% lead over the R5 3600 and a 7% lead over Intel's i5-10600K. Single threaded is really where these XT processors will shine though, and the 3600 XT is basically neck and neck with Intel's fastest single threaded CPU on the market, the 10900K. Of course, this won't reflect in every program or game that you use, but for Maxon Cinema 4D software, there is a noticeable improvement here. The improvement in rendering performance continues when we look at Blender, and I think that we can safely say that this is the fastest six core processor that you can currently buy if you're mainly interested in CPU rendering performance. That is of course if you are rendering on the CPU, because rendering on a six core CPU is never really a good choice. Rendering on the GPU is actually what I'd recommend instead if possible. V-Ray shows a 10% improvement over the R5 3600 and a 6% improvement over the 10600K, and when we take a look at video editing, the 3600 XT is a perfectly capable CPU. We save around a minute on render times, but more importantly, that boost in clock speed will allow for faster processing of those more lightly threaded tasks within your editing software. That leads nicely into our photo editing benchmark, Adobe Lightroom, where the 3600 XT is clearly the better choice again over the 10600K, not only on value because it is cheaper, but on raw performance alone. Overall, the clock speed bump of the 3600 XT will give you a nice performance boost in pretty much any multi-threaded production type task out there, 
and depending on the pricing in your region is probably the better choice over the 3600. Of course though, if production workloads and rendering performance is your primary focus, I would highly recommend just saving the extra cash for an eight core 3700X if possible. What I was really curious to see though is what the additional clock speed meant when it comes to gaming and the results are good. In most cases, you'll see performance now matching those more expensive, higher clocked Ryzen processors like the 3900X and 3950X, and in other cases, I found it to be just slightly faster. It is going to be fairly game dependent and also dependent on if it's a meaningful difference for you, but generally the 10600K is still the faster gaming CPU, but to be fair, it is also a more expensive processor and also requires a more expensive motherboard to be overclocked and run a high speed memory kit. The 3600 XT is a much more economical choice for gamers and will get you most of the way there, especially if you're not that interested in gaming at higher frame rates, but instead at higher resolutions with graphics and details cranked to high and ultra, you're likely not going to notice a difference between a 3600 XT and a 10600 K. And honestly, reading through the comments, that seems to be why most of you are choosing a Ryzen CPU over Intel, but let's circle back to this discussion and now take a look at overclocking. This is something that really surprised me with the 3600 XT. At a load voltage of 1.36 volts, I was able to hit 4.6 gigahertz, and this was stable in Blender, Cinebench, and every game that I had the chance to test. Those clock speeds are far above anything that I've seen on a Ryzen CPU previously, when we're talking about an all core overclock. At this frequency, we can actually beat a 10600K in Cinebench when that's overclocked to five gigahertz flat and we get a significant bump in V-Ray as well. However, while overclocking the 10600K can pretty much level it with the best gaming CPU that you can buy right now, overclocking the 3600 XT doesn't give us any noticeable improvement when it comes to gaming. This is why for enthusiast gamers who do game at higher frame rates, whether that be for competitive titles or not, the 10600K is still a very sensible choice if you're willing to spend the extra cash. In the end, the 3600 XT, I think we can agree, is a welcome update to the Ryzen 3000 lineup until 4th gen uh, arrives later this year. If you were kind of interested in 3950X, 3900X kind of gaming performance in a six core product, now you have that as an option. Personally, I was really surprised to see that much higher overclocking ceiling. 4.6 gigahertz on all six cores is not what I expected to have on technically still a Ryzen 3000 CPU. If you are considering the 3600 XT, I would also consider the quad core 3300X, which you can get for around $130 cheaper. That saved cash would likely be more than enough to upgrade your GPU, which would be the more sensible choice for a game rig, do stay tuned for a video coming up between those two specifically quite soon. So if you are interested in these new Ryzen XT processors, I will leave them linked down below in the description. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.